Filoni, you're muted. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody can hear me now. Ah, wait, I want to move this uh, Zoom grid for me. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Elon Yogev. Uh, so this talk is about uh, subquadratic snarks in the random oracle model. Uh, this is joint work with our uh, session chair, Ale. And uh, I'll just start uh, by trying to compete with uh, Ron's uh, nostalgic, uh, nostalgic slide, which I added uh, just now. <laughs> Uh, but I, uh, I want to join him and say that uh, I truly miss uh, Berkeley and the Simons Institute, and I wish I was there now. This is uh, COVID compliant. There are no people. So. <laughs> yeah. He's um, live streaming. I want to put it here. I can't do this split view. I wanted to do the split view, but I, it doesn't seem to work. Okay. Uh, okay, so I want to start with the technical uh, slides. And uh, the subject is succinct arguments, and not just succinct arguments, but in the random oracle model. Um, so we talked about these in, uh, <laughs> in the semester, okay, a year ago. And I'm assuming everybody knows and remembers everything in all the talks. Uh, no, so I'll give an informal definition. Um, so this is a proof system between a prover and a verifier, and we have uh, some language L, okay, a deterministic or non-deterministic language. And uh, the prover and verifier both have shared access to this random oracle, okay? So this truly random function. So they have query access to this function, and we're gonna denote it as zeta in this talk. And the prover is trying to convince the verifier that X is in the language. And the communication complexity is succinct. So uh, as opposed to Ron's talk where he wanted the, the communication to com complexity to go up to the witness size, uh, here we, we want the communication to be like much less than the witness size, okay? And for that, of course, we'll have to settle with a, a computational soundness. So this is what's called an argument and not a, and not a proof. Uh, so let me be slightly more precise with that. Um, so what is the security of a snark? Uh, so we're going to have this T epsilon security, okay? We have two parameters. Uh, T is going to be the number of queries and epsilon the success probability. And we're going to say that our snark has T epsilon security if any T query unbounded, okay? So completionally unbounded adversary P, okay? is unbounded, but he makes at most T queries to the random oracle then the probability over the random oracle, okay, that he succeeds in, in making the verifier accept, okay, for some X that is not in the language, of course. Um, so this is at most epsilon, okay? So you make T queries and you can cheat with probability at most epsilon. And uh, as one said, please ask questions and feel free to unmute yourself. So, uh, why do we study the random oracle model? Well, it's an elegant information theoretic model. Uh, it also supports well-known constructions that we'll talk about. Uh, of course, you can take these constructions from this weird random oracle model into reality by some uh, heuristic implementation of the random oracle. And constructions in this model are also plausibly po post-quantum secure. Uh, and actually the construction we have, uh, have uh, proven to be quantum secure. Okay, so what constructions do we have? We have two basic constructions. So uh, Mikali 94 and recently BCS, this is Ben Sasson, Kiesa and uh, Spooner. And they both work under the same paradigm. So they take a information theoretic proof. So can you guys see my mouse? Like, is this also shared? Yeah, okay. So they take an information uh, theoretic proof. So this would be a PCP in the case of Mikali or an IOP in the case of BCS. And thank you, Ron, for explaining about IOPs. So I can, uh, uh, so I have a similar uh, picture here, but uh, I guess everybody is now more familiar with it. Um, and so they take this proof system. This is an information theoretic proof system. They take a cryptographic commitment, 
okay? And this is uh, going to be the Merkel tree, and this commitment supports local openings. Uh, and together they compile them and get a non-interactive succinct argument as now. Um, so we're going to focus on uh, Mikali's construction here, okay? Uh, just for, mainly for simplicity, okay? So we have only one round. Uh, so what is the construction in slightly more detail? The prover is going to take the witness, compute a PCP of this witness, compute a Merkel tree, okay, using the, the random oracle, okay? So he's going to use the random oracle to compress every two nodes to one node, and so on and so on until he gets the root. Then he's going to use the random oracle on this root, okay, to derive PCP randomness. Uh, so here the random oracle is going to take the root as input, and output as many random bits as the verifier of the PCP needs, okay? Uh, and then the proof is going to contain uh, this root, all the PCP answers, okay, to these queries, and then all the authentication passes, okay? So if I want to, for example, uh, convince you that, uh, that this node was consistent uh, with the root, okay? This root is essentially a commitment to this. It's a very short commitment to this very long string. Then you need to send all the, the locations on this path and their neighbors. So you need to send this, the first node and the second node, then we can compute this one. And then you send this one and we compute this one and you send this one, we compute this one and so on. Okay, until the root. Uh, so this is what the prover does. He writes the PCP, computes the Merkel tree, derives PCP randomness, okay, from the root, uh, and then sends the root and all the authentication path for all the queries inside the PCP. What does the verifier do on his end? He verifies the PCP answers, and then he verifies the authentication patterns. Okay, so uh, this was Mikali's construction, and this is like an overview of, of, of what we had. Questions up to here? Let's see if there's more places. Okay. Uh, so the main question is, what is the size of this uh, a final argument pi? Okay, and this is going to be the main topic of this uh, uh, of this talk, is the the size of the uh, the size of the snog. Okay, the size of the argument. Um, oops. Okay. So just really to sum up my whole talk uh, in one slide uh, uh, quickly, Mikali's construction has quadratic argument size, and I'm gonna explain exactly uh, what this is. Uh, and we give a subquadratic argument size. Okay, so we give a new construction. It's based on Mikali, but it's a different construction and it gets a smaller uh, argument size. And this is really the first improvement to Mikali's construction in, in many years, okay, in terms of the argument size. So I want to explain these in, the, in the, a bit more detail. So why, what is, what do I mean quadratic size and why Mikali has quadratic size and then we'll see our construction. So let's again think back of Mikali's argument and suppose you use it with a PCP that has some length L over some alphabet sigma and has a query complexity Q. Okay, so what is the size? So first, you know, you write down the answers to the PCP. Okay, so this is Q times log sigma. This is just the, the symbols you need to answer. Okay. Then for every symbol, you need to authenticate it. So you need to send the authentication path. And so you have Q paths, okay? Every path is of length log L, okay? More or less, so this is the, the length of the path. And then the length of the pass it contains log L nodes, but every node has output size lambda, where lambda is the output of the random oracle. Okay, so we have Q times lambda times log L. This is the, the size that we need. Um, okay, but how, the, how does this connect back to the security that we want? Okay, so you asked me for a snog with security T epsilon, okay? You told me, Elon, please give me a snog that if you make at most T queries, your probability of cheating is at most epsilon, okay? Then I claim that the, the Oracle output must be, okay, we must set a lambda to be log T over epsilon. And the PCP query complexity must also be log T over epsilon. Okay, and I'm gonna explain these two points. 
but just believe me for a second. If you believe me, then the argument size is quadratic, okay? So we have this log t over epsilon, and this is also log t over epsilon. And for now, and in this talk, I'm like gonna ignore the lower low order terms, okay? So they're hiding in this O tilde, and we have log t over epsilon squared. Okay, so this is the size of the, of the argument in Mikali. Okay. Um, so why, why do we need to set these two parameters like this? So first claim to get T epsilon security, the output size must be lambda equals log T over epsilon. So just think of the following attack. Okay, think of a cheating prover that is guessing the root in advance, okay? So it really is just guessing the root in advance. This has probability two to the minus lambda to succeed. But if it succeeds, okay, once he knows the root in advance, he can derive all the PCP randomness uh, and then just come up with a PCP that convinces the verifier for these particular queries, okay? So of course in a PCP, like you, you need first to commit to a PCP and then get the queries, okay? If you get the queries first, you can just fool the verifier. So he could just come up with a PCP that fools the verifiers, compute the Merkel tree, and then with probability two to the minus lambda, it is the root that he guessed in advance, okay? Moreover, he can try this T times, okay? So you have roughly T times, okay? So each time it, it costs him some queries, but let's just call this one. So he can repeat this process roughly t times, which means that his success probability is t times two to the minus lambda. You want this to be at most epsilon, okay? Because this is a concrete attack, and we require that this is a, this would be at most epsilon, and this gives us lambda equals log t over epsilon. Okay. So what about the number of queries? Okay, that was lambda. What about q? So uh, I claim that the number of queries of the PCP or IOP, okay, must be log T over epsilon also. So why is that? So observe that we want the soundness to be epsilon over T, okay? We want the soundness of the PCP to be epsilon over T, in particular, much smaller than the soundness, like the soundness error should be much smaller than the soundness you want for the snark. And why is that? Because the cheating prover uh, can try in its mind to, uh, to compete with the PCP. So you can just think of trying a random PCP, okay? This random PCP might have a, 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 some chance of uh, accepting, and then you can try this T times, okay? So because you can try this T times, we must set uh, the soundness to be epsilon over T. How do we get uh, a PCP with soundness epsilon over T? Um, so, there are different ways depending on what PCP you start with. Uh, basically what we do, we take some PCP and we amplify it, okay? We, uh, we do repetitions. Uh, and just let's think of a standard PCP. So think if I have a, a constant soundness PCP with constant queries, okay? Then the number of repetitions I need to get this is log T over epsilon, which would mean that this is the number of, uh, um, of queries that I have. Uh, you have some better PCPs, and even if you use like dream PCPs, which are really the limit that we imagine exist, okay? And in a previous work with Ali, we showed that uh, you cannot have better PCPs or IOPs, uh, assuming ETH. Uh, then again, the only gain that you have are like uh, small. It's uh, like uh, a login factor, but I'm ignoring these factors uh, here. Okay, so going back, uh, Q had to be log T over epsilon, lambda had to be log T over epsilon, the proof size is log T over epsilon squared. And you can show, one can show a low bound of log T over epsilon. So this, we do not expect to get better than this. And the question is, uh, what, what lies here in uh, between? Okay, can we have better constructions or should we improve the low bounds? Okay, so as a result, as I said already, uh, so it's gonna be a sub quadratic snarl. And uh, more particularly, the theorem says that there exist snarls in the random Oracle model, okay? That achieve argument size log T over epsilon times log T. 
Okay, so instead of log t over epsilon times log t over epsilon, this, uh, you only have this log t factor, uh, which means that if t is rather small compared to one over epsilon, then this is really a big improvement. Uh, and I wanna highlight the, the, the high level approach of what we do. So uh, we're gonna start with a strong information theoretic proof, okay? So here I mean that we're not just gonna start with a PCP with better soundness. We already talked about the limits of that, but actually start with a PCP with a stronger soundness notion, okay? So this is gonna be a different notion than, than standard soundness. We're gonna use this with a weak cryptographic commitment. So this is actually not gonna be, strictly speaking, a commitment scheme, uh, but some weak relaxed version of it, okay? That is much cheaper to implement. Uh, and together we're gonna get this sub uh, quadratic snarl. Uh, okay, so that was the uh, theoretical part of the, uh, of the statement. And uh, I wanna emphasize that this is not only a theoretical result, uh, but this construction can be used in practice as well. Uh, <clears throat> so I wanna give you some, uh, some numbers. So what we did here, we compared it with uh, Michali's construction on particular sets of, uh, of uh, on particular values of T of epsilon. Uh, what we did, we, take, we took some base PCP, okay? So we imagined with, that we had a PCP with sound and error half, query complexity three and a proof length of two to the 30, okay? Um, and this is what the base PCP that we used to, to amplify. Um, in reality, you might not have these parameters for PCPs. You might get close to them with an IOP. Uh, this is just uh, like demonstrating the numbers. If you plug in something different, it changes both in Nikali's construction and in our construction, okay? So this is like some baseline to, to, to check the both of them. Uh, and what you can see in red, okay, in red is a Mikali size, in blue is a, is a snog uh, that we get. And, uh, and so you can see the differences and you can see that the best, the best uh, improvement we get is here, okay, where T is, is small, but one over epsilon is large. Okay, and here we actually get a factor of two better. Okay, so what is the construction? So the starting point, as I said, of the construction is Michali's construction. So you should still have this in mind. And uh, what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna set the Oracle output size to be log T, okay, roughly. And uh, this already uh, is very good because it solves the argument size problem, okay? So now the argument size is just gonna be Q times lambda, which is exactly what, what we want because we set lambda to be smaller. The problem is that if you do this, the construction is just not secure, okay? So we lose security. Uh, so for that, we're gonna make four changes. Okay, we're gonna make four changes to the Michali construction. Uh, we're gonna chop the tree. We're gonna use domain separation. We're gonna permute the proof and we're not just gonna use any PCP, but we need robust soundness. Okay, so these are the four changes that we're gonna make and uh, I'm gonna describe them, uh, but let me just say that these changes, uh, each and one of them does not increase the argument size. Okay, so these are changes that maintain the same argument size. Each one alone does not increase security, but actually all of them together combined, they do increase security. And because they increase security, they let us reduce the output size of the random oracle, okay, to this value that we set here. Uh, and that's how we get the improvement. Uh, and also one last comment is that our analysis works even where, when uh, you, can, you assume that you have salts in the construction. Uh, so here I mean that we let the adversary, when he makes some query X and uh, to the random oracle and he gets back a response Y, so we assume he has like some prefix, some salt that he can control. So he can change this salt and then get a new response, a new Y. And uh, our analysis is like even stronger. It's even for adversaries that can do this. And this is useful uh, for zero knowledge, but in this talk, I'm not gonna talk about zero knowledge. Okay. So the first and maybe the main uh, change that we do 
is we chop the tree. So this is Mikali's construction, okay, where we compute the whole tree up to the root. And what we're going to do, we're going to define some layer, okay, I star, we call this the stop layer. Uh, and we're gonna uh, chop the tree here, okay? So the honest prover is gonna write the same PCP, compute the Merkle tree, and then at some point, it's just gonna stop. This entire layer, we call it the cap, okay? And to derive the PCP randomness, instead of running the random oracle on the root, we're gonna run the random oracle on the entire cap, okay? So we're gonna take all the nodes in this layer, concatenate them, treat them as one long string and run the random oracle on this. Okay, so this is uh, the chopped tree. Um, so just some intuition why we use this. So first, um, if you set I star to be zero, this is Mikali, okay? So this is exactly Mikali. If you set I star to be log L, okay? Meaning that you chop everything like at the leaf layer, and this means that you just send the entire PCP, okay? So when you send the entire PCP, like the prover has no, no way of cheating uh, in, in terms of the commitment scheme. So in general, when I star is larger, we get better and better security, okay? But the argument size is larger, okay? In particular, when I star equals log L, this is just trivial sending the entire witness, okay? And also maybe I wanna mention that this is not like a very good trade-off, okay? Uh, the, the price you pay for the argument size is in general much higher than what you gain in security. However, there is one crucial point, okay? One crucial layer. And this is where you set I star to be log Q. This is a very special layer, why? Because we have Q, so Q is the number of queries to the PCP. So anyway, even in Mikali's construction, we're gonna send Q uh, paths for Q locations. So if you look at layer log Q, this layer has Q nodes overall, okay? With high probability, you're gonna send all of these nodes or at least most of them, okay? A vast majority of them. This is because you're sending Q, uh, Q random uh, positions in this proof. So if you stop at, at layer log Q, you get better security, and this is something that we can actually exploit, and you pay nothing in the, in the argument size. Okay, so this is a, a, an important point. And what is the intuition for better security? Okay, why does a, a higher I star give us better security? So in particular, think of the attack that I described before, where the adversary uh, guesses the route in advance. Okay, and if he guesses the route in advance, he knows all the PCP queries, uh, and then he can just come up with the PCP that he wants. Here, guessing the entire cap in advance, okay, which means guesses, guessing all the nodes in this cap, this is like really impossible, okay? There are many nodes here, and there's no, you have really small probability of guessing all of them. What the adversary can do is guess maybe one of them or a few of them. Okay, but if he guesses only one of them, then now this node controls only a small part of the proof. Okay, it doesn't control the entire PCP. In particular, if we have Q nodes here, then it, this, this one node controls only a one over Q fraction of the proof. Okay. So um, change number two, this is domain separation. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a, a different Oracle for every single location in the tree, okay? And what does that mean, okay? Uh, either I have many Oracles or I just have one, but the, you can just add a prefix, okay? For all queries with I and J, where your query is for the I level and J position inside the tree. And intuitively, this prevents reusing inversion or collisions, okay? So if I found, because in our construction, actually finding a collision or inversion is gonna happen, okay? Like a cheating prover will have a probability of doing this. Uh, we want to make sure he cannot reuse one collision in many positions, okay? So we're gonna add this prefix. Uh, so for example, uh, this node would be like one, one, this node would be one, two, this node would be two, one, and so on. 
And uh, you would just add these prefixes for every query that you make uh, to make sure that like a collision here is different than a collision here. Okay, change number three, permuting the proof. So we're gonna permute the PCP proof before applying the chopped Merkle tree. Uh, so this means that we're gonna permute the locations of the proof, okay? How they're ordered over the, uh, in the leaves. So for simplicity, I'm just gonna assume I have access to a random permutation over the locations one to L, okay? Um, if you're worried about, you know, this assumption that I uh, assume the random permutation. So first you can derive this permutation from a random oracle. This is called the, in general, the Luby Rakoff permutation. Uh, and actually you don't really need a permutation and the random function will, uh, will suffice here. But again, let's just think of having a permutation. Uh, and the, what is the effect of this? The effect of this is as imagining that we have a PCP with uniform random, uniform independent random queries, okay? So if you had queries at uh, position one, two, and three, after the permutations, they're just gonna go to uniform random positions. Uh, and even for simplicity, you can just imagine that we started with a, a completely uniform PCP and then you don't need the, this permutation actually. Um, okay, so now the changes, instead of writing the PCP in the order that the PCP tells you, you're gonna compute the PCP and then compute the permutation of this PCP and then write it here. So this is change number three. And the last one is that we're not gonna use any PCP but we need some uh, robust soundness PCP. Uh, so we introduced uh, some new notion of, uh, of uh, P a PCP soundness we call permuted robust PCPs. Uh, Ron talked slightly about these robust PCPs. Uh, so this is similar only with uh, a, a permutation before. Uh, and the intuition that I wanna convey here is that um, even if a, a prover changes a few number of locations after the fact, so after seeing the, the queries of the verifier, uh, no harm, harm is made, okay? Uh, so uh, I'll give a slightly more uh, technical definition, but what we're gonna have is a parameter B. B is gonna be the number of blocks, okay? Because I don't wanna consider each and every sim symbol of the proof, but we're gonna consider them in blocks. And we're gonna assume we have some uh, permutation Okay, and I'm gonna define a, a distance measure. So the distance between two proofs, pi and pi prime, is gonna be the blockwise dis distance between the two strings, okay? So really, if these are my two strings, okay, then you can see that they are all exactly the same, okay, in all the blocks, uh, except this block, okay? This block has two symbols that are different, but they're both in the same block, so the distance is one. Okay, just the blockwise distance between these two blocks. Uh, and again, the blocks are not like positions one, two, three, but these are the positions one, two, three after I permuted the proof. Okay, so the blocks are actually gonna be like a random, a random blocks. It's like a randomly permuting the, the proof, taking the blocks and then looking at the distance. Okay, so using this, I can uh, define what a, a permuted robust PCP is. Um, so we're gonna say that a PCP has permuted robust soundness epsilon, okay? And we have two parameters, the blocks. This is a more rather fixed parameter that we're just gonna have in mind. Uh, and the other parameter is the distance D. Okay, so we're gonna have some distance uh, parameter. And we're gonna say that it has a robust soundness epsilon if the probability of this game Okay, instead of the standards on this game uh, is at most epsilon. Um, so what is the game? So first the game publishes a random permutation pi, okay, that everybody can see. The cheating prover is gonna output some PCP string pi, okay? Then we're gonna sample a PCP randomness row, okay? So this is the, the randomness for the verifier. Uh, and as opposed to standard PCP, where now we would check for this randomness, like does he accept the proof? Here we're gonna give back this randomness to the cheating prover. Okay, so we're giving him back this randomness. 
the cheating prover needs to output another PCP string uh, pipeline, and this can be as a function of row, okay? But when we are gonna accept, so the game outputs one, okay, accepts, if and only if, um, the distance between pi and pi prime is at most d, okay? And again, in this distance measure that we had. Uh, so it can change at most d blocks of the proof pi that he originally committed to. And of course, the verifier accepts uh, pi prime. Okay, so this is gonna be the definition of robust, uh, permuted robust soundness. Um, okay. So one additional technical uh, definition is that um, we're gonna say that a PCP has robustness ratio beta, okay? If for any D, you look at how harm, how much harm does it make to let the prover add, uh, change one more block, okay? So what is the ratio between the soundness when he is allowed to change D plus one blocks uh, compared to only changing D blocks? And if you can uh, bound this ratio by beta, then we say that the PCP has robustness ratio beta. Okay, so this is the final construction. You take Merkel, you chop the tree, that's one, okay, at uh, some level I star. Uh, you add domain separation, that is two. Uh, you permute the proof, that is three. And you don't use any proof, you also use robust uh, PCPs. That's four. Uh, and let me also just hint, uh, because I'm not sure how much time I will have. Uh, if you're worried about how I get these robust PCPs, uh, then what we show is actually any repeated PCP uh, is a robust PCP. Okay, so you don't have to worry about this uh, too much. Uh, questions about the construction? Uh, hi, Alan. Um, Hi, Nick. Yeah, uh, could you go back to the, the definition of this robustness? To just understand. Um, okay, so so here the, the, the everybody knows the permutation. It's a... Yeah, everybody knows the permutation, just some permutation of the locations. And what, what's this delta perm? Yeah, so this is this is the distance between two proofs. Yeah. But the distance is not like the Hamming distance. Okay. I'm going to count how many blocks are different. Okay. Okay. And uh, so the picture is here. Okay. So in yeah. this example, I have two strings. They're exactly the same everywhere except in this block. So the distance is one. Ah, I see. Okay. So the, the, this is a, because the Hamming distance is invariant under permutations, but this block waste distance is not. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if it was just Hamming distance, the permutation would mean nothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, but because I'm not looking exactly at Hamming distance, but just said blocks, uh, I want to make sure that I don't have like one important block and one other block where the verifier never queries like anything. I want to make sure that every block like would have a, the same amount of queries more or less with high probability. So okay. that's why like I'm permuting everything. All right, thanks. Okay. Thank uh, you for breaking the ice on questions. In fact, I want to, you know, as moderator, please, please ask questions. Uh, uh, and also, those of you who feel comfortable, uh, uh, if you turn on the video, it might help a little bit more interactions. Uh, uh, but yeah, okay. Um, thanks. Um, okay. Thank you. I'm going to try to continue. Okay. So th this was the construction. Let me see the time. And also, Elon, just you asked earlier about time. Uh, uh, I think yeah. five, six more minutes. Okay. Okay. So I'll try to say something about the proof. Uh, so the proof uh, is shown in two steps. Uh, the first step is saying, okay, just assume I have a PCP, which doesn't only have soundness, but also has permuted robust soundness. Okay. So this is a strong PCP. Uh, and then, I'll show that if you start with such a strong PCP and uh, you commit to it, okay, with this chopped tree with domain separation and the permutation, then you get the, the snog that we want. 
Uh, and then the second step would be to construct such PCPs. And as I already said, uh, to construct these PCPs, it's not like that we build them uh, from ground. We show that if you take any base PCP and, uh, and repeat it and amplify it, actually what you get is, uh, is this robust PCP. Um, okay, so the main lemma for the first part that we show is that if you give me any PCP that has soundness epsilon and permuted robustness ratio beta, okay, so the, we can bound the, the ratio by beta, and lambda is more or less log t, okay? It has to be two log t plus log beta plus three, okay? So we really worked hard on the constants here. Um, and you take the, the, um, uh, the stop layer to be such that two to the i star is b, okay? So this would exactly correspond between uh, the blocks uh, for the roots of the stop layer, okay, and the number of blocks in the in the robust PCP, uh, then you have soundness t times epsilon PCP, okay, which is what we want. And uh, for this proof, we introduce something that we call scores of Oracle queries. This is a very simple but helpful tool that I'll show you. Uh, and then we use them to reduce any cheating prover to a strategy of the permuted robust soundness. Uh, so let me just quickly say what I mean by scoring uh, Oracle queries. Um, so in our construction, an adversary might be able to find collisions, okay? And this is because we set the, the security parameter to be quite small, okay? In particular, it could be the case that the probability that he finds a collision is half. Okay, what I want to do is, is somehow score, a, give a score to his queries, okay? For example, if he found one collision, I want to give him like some score. If he found a hundred collisions, then I want to give him a very high score, okay? Then I'm going to say that the probability of a, a trace that has a very high score is going to be very small, okay? But this is going to be uh, something small. So uh, the score of a KY collision, so I'm looking at the trace of queries that some adversary did to the random oracle. If this trace contains a KY's collision, uh, I'm gonna give it a, a count of K minus one. Okay, in particular, every standard collision is gonna get one point. Okay, so I look at the trace, I just count how many collisions or how many, how many K collisions, uh, I sum all of them, and this is, the, this is gonna be the score collision, okay? Uh, we're also going to score inversions. Uh, so what is an inversion? We're going to count the number of queries where the response of the query was some value y, okay? And this value y hit some previous query, x1, x2, okay? So this corresponds to like inverting the, the random oracle, okay? We did not expect uh, the cheating prover to perform some query well, the output is some string that he already queried, queried in the past, okay? Uh, so we're gonna count the number of occurrences that we have, okay, of, a, of an inversion. And um, there are different ways to define these, uh, these calls, uh, um, but I think what we use like uh, is meaningful and, and well, at least useful. Uh, and what we show is that if you have any algorithm that makes at most t queries, okay, then the probability that the collision score is more than k is gonna be more or less t squared over two to the lambda, okay? So this is expected from the birthday paradox to the power of k, okay? So even if this is just like half, okay? So probability of a collision is half, probability of getting score k is, is like a decaying exponentially with k. Uh, and the same thing more or less holds for inversions, okay? So you can ignore the small factors, but just it also go, it goes down uh, with K. Okay. And then to prove, uh, to prove the soundness of our construction, okay, it's gonna look as follows. So what is the probability that the verifier accepts? So we're gonna sum over all K from zero to infinity. And we're gonna say, okay, let's condition on the verifier 
um, uh, the, what's the probability that the verifier accepts condition on the cheating prover achieving a score of K times the probability of achieving a score of K. Okay, and K, K just runs into, into infinity. Now, what we show that, um, so once you fixed, you conditioned on the cheating prover having a score of K. So we can find at most K collisions or, or at most K inversions or any mix of those. Um, we show that we can reduce this to the, uh, to the soundness game of the PCP, okay? The permitted robust soundness game. Uh, this is like a major technical step that you should be glad that I'm uh, sparing you, okay? Uh, and surely I don't have time. I wanna finish like in one minute. Uh, but just intuitively, why do we get this, this, uh, this thing? So first he can try, as I said, he can try to invert, like if you give him a score of K, he can invert K nodes, okay? So he can play the, the permuted robustness soundness game with a distance of K, okay? So he can uh, commit to some PCP, see the queries, and then invert K nodes, so he can create something of distance K. Uh, he can also find K collisions, so it's not really committed to one proof. So he gains this additional factor of two to the K because when he finds collisions and he can mix and, and match between them and he can actually commit to one of two to the K uh, proofs. And then also ha we have this factor of T. This is because he can do everything again and again T times. Okay, or at least at most T times. Um, then using the robustness ratio plus the score lemma, okay, so this purple score here, this re we just replace with the, the probability of getting score K. And this permutation, uh, permuted robust soundness, we replace it with beta to the K times epsilon PCP, okay, because this is the ratio. So for K equals zero, it's just, it just you have no distance, it's just epsilon. For K equals one, you have uh, one way multiplication of beta and so on. Uh, and then you just take T and Epsilon outside and you have this infinite sum, but this infinite sum converges because how we chose Lambda. Okay, so it's gonna converge to some constant and actually in the proof we get like the constant here to be one. Okay, and not there. So I guess I'm out of time, right? I confirm. Yeah. So I would just say that the second step is gonna be constructing a permitted robust PCPs. Uh, and we have this lemma that I don't have time to explain, but shows that you can take any base PCP, repeat it and actually get uh, some robustness ratio. Uh, and when you plug everything in, uh, you, are, you, you can prove our argument size. And I'll just conclude by saying that what we have shown, we have shown snogs that have size log t over epsilon times log t. Um, there is a lower bound of log t over epsilon. And the big major open question here is like, does there exist nodes in the random oracle that achieve size log t over epsilon? If this question is answered positively, positively this would be like a, a, huge, a huge benefit uh, on the snogs we have. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Elon. Clap, clap. Um, uh, are there uh, questions for Elon? So, Elon, uh, if you. Sorry, uh, go ahead, Yuval. Quick question just if you, an intermediate question would be to replace log t by log one over epsilon. Do you have any insights on that? Yeah, that's a great question. That would be like uh, the dual version of our construction, right? Uh, actually, we, we don't have such a construction. Any intuition? Uh, I, the intuition is like uh, asking me if this open problem is, uh, okay. can we solve it positively or negatively? And I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. And I want to say that for practical purposes, like maybe this uh, exact open problem is not the most important one, uh, but still using these techniques, you might uh, uh, like improve other smaller order terms that I didn't talk about, uh, which have like significant practical implications. Mm. Okay, thanks.
Uh, but I'm not sure about this open problem. Like I have no idea. I also have a question. Um, so your analysis reminds me of uh, work by, I think, the Tonsky, Klein, and Panath about showing that uh, some variant of Killian is secure if you only use multi-collision resistant hash functions. It seems like you're saying that with if you set the root of this Merkle tree to be small enough, then you might be able to find collisions, but you can't really find very large multi-collisions. So is there, have, have you, is there a, a relation between your analysis and that, or can you use uh, BKP in a, some kind of black box way? You got a similar result? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. We did not use the uh, 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 result. Um, so um, yeah, they have something in a similar flavor, right? They use a, a multi-collision resistant hash uh, and then they don't get quite a, a commitment scheme. Uh, they get something relaxed. And then they also show a PCP with a stronger uh, soundness notion where uh, even in if you commit, you don't really commit to the to the PCP. This is a PCP like over a large alphabet, and for every location you commit to like a list of symbols. So the cheating pool is committed to this list, and then uh, uh, and they also show like a transformation that uh, uh, that goes from a standard PCP to this uh, stronger PCP. Um, so we don't use the result, and I don't think that we even can. So for sure, for practical matters, like the result would not be good. Uh, but even for theoretical ones, like what the cheating prover can do in our scheme is very, very different. In their scheme, eventually what he can do is commit to a list of symbols at every location. And in our scheme, it's very different. He can find collisions and um, he can actually, like there might be uh, locations where he can open to two to the K uh, possibilities. Uh, after the seeing the, the, the randomness of the verifier, he can do some other changes. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a different game, but it's similar in the, in the like the smell. Similar flavor that I agree. Are there any further questions? Um, okay, so if not, we have a uh, lunch slash breakfast slash dinner break, uh, break right now. Uh, to I'm gonna sort of resume in uh, just a little over an hour. Uh, for uh, for those of you that feel like it, uh, we do have like a, sort of this uh, gather.town link. I'm gonna put it here for socializing. I definitely at least like to encourage the speakers for the past two talks to hang out there for a bit and see if there are any additional talks. Uh, I'll myself be hanging out there while I fix up some food for myself. Uh, uh, so I, I linked to the, 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 I put it in chat. No, sorry, I didn't put it in chat. I put it in Elon's chat. Uh, now I put it in chat for everybody. Uh, um, and so we'll, uh, we'll resume uh, over here at, uh, uh, Noon California time. Uh, with uh, we have two more talks. I think uh, at the intersection of uh, blockchains and and um, law and uh, and econ. Uh, so please stick around for that. Thank you to both speakers for uh, the morning session. So and both excellent talks. Thank All right. You. See you over there. <laughs>